Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints. And in this episode, I am happy to bring you my interview with Michael Wyant from Flores Barbecue. The way it looks when you look at his last name, it looks like why not, but it's Wyant. Previously in Whitney, Texas, and now they're going to be opening up shop in Fort Worth. It's super exciting. This interview is pretty long, so I'm going to make the, this intro kind of short, but we get in all of this history from San Marcos to Whitney. I did this back at the end of last year, so I checked back in with him to talk about all the news uh, surrounding their opening in Fort Worth, and uh, it's uh, coming up in April, and you'll hear all about it. It's, it's really exciting stuff. I'm really proud of him and excited for him. Uh, one thing I did want you to note, at the middle to end of this interview, we talk about his menu and we we get into what he puts into his tortillas and it is a spectacular idea and it just <laughs> sounds so good and I'm assuming that he's going to continue doing that at his new location. So uh, sit back, enjoy this interview. Thank you, Michael, for taking the time. And as always, I am stoked to have the Smoke Sheet as a sponsor of this podcast. Totally dig what they're doing. It's a barbecue newsletter put together by Ryan Cooper who is Barbecue Tourist, and Sean Ludwig, who is NYC Barbecue. Uh, it comes to you once a week, and it's chock full of tons of news and information. It's not something they, that someone just slapped together and put a bunch of news in the set off. There's really good stuff in there, and there's things that I didn't know, and I feel like I try to stay on top of everything. So it's really great. It's something that you will scroll through and read everything, and then there's also links to cool podcasts that are out, new YouTube stuff that's out. There's a recipe of a week, and then there's also links to all of the new events that are coming out, barbecue events. And and as I mentioned before, I, I always feel like I'm last to know on these events and, or I write down somewhere that there's an event coming and then I, I miss it and I feel terrible. So this way you don't miss out on events. Just go to barbecuenewsletter.com. That's bbqnewsletter.com. Sign up. Simple get it every week. You'd definitely be stoked too that you're getting it. Uh, thanks so much. And if you are digging these, please subscribe. That way you won't miss out on any episode. There's a lot of episodes and I try to pump them out as quickly as possible. I'm really trying to cover as much ground as I can with as many interesting people as possible. So please subscribe. Also comment below. Let me know what you're thinking of these. That helps me uh, get a barometer as to uh, oh, how they're doing and also if there's anybody that you'd like to uh, see me uh, check out. Also, I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with lots more content and cool stuff. Uh, enjoy this. Good morning, Michael. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Doing well. What's a what's what's a typical day I like to ask? Like, what's a typical day for you? I know it's the holiday time, so it's a little probably a little different. Uh, well, right now we're taking a break um, until the the beginning of the year, but uh, we just finished Christmas, obviously, and it was just nuts. I mean, the whole week, you know, we were selling out in an hour and a half. <laughs> um, you know, because every, everybody does, you know, nobody puts in their pre orders, and so you know they come and get in line, and and then you know, kind of that want six pounds of brisket, eight pounds of brisket, you know, it's briskets go pretty quick when, you know, they're buying that much. Yeah. I was talking to a, a number of people that went to Texas and they said that people were ordering entire briskets in front of them in line for places. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And, and we had a bunch of pre-orders for whole briskets and we did turkey breasts and whole hams. Um, we didn't do whole turkeys because they're kind of a pain. Um, they, they're good once a year for Thanksgiving, but they're kind of a pain to do because they're I was, I'm, I'm curious, when you do a whole ham, are you doing a, like a spiral ham or are you do, No, so what we do is, uh, when I was working at Sam's Club, we we, uh, uh, we had these, what they're called carving hams. They're made by Wright, um, the same as that make Wright bacon. I don't know if you ever had yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they do, it's, it's like a pre-smoked turkey, I mean, a ham, uh, but we re-smoke it with the post oak so it gets more of that smoky flavor. Oh, cool. Um, and then it renders the fat on top, so it's, it's really, really good. Uh -huh. um, but it, the good thing about them is that you don't have to deal with a bone or anything, and they're super easy to slice because they're all just one piece. There's no bone or anything to, to hassle with. So That's perfect. That sounds awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, awesome. It's, it's really, they're really easy, but they, um, they're they really great, and we, we always make at least a couple extra for us. <laughs> That's Yeah, yeah, no, I can imagine. And, it's, and that's something, too, if you're not from an area like in Texas, chances are if you're listening to this from not from Texas, you don't know about that. That's not something that here in – we have we have honey-baked ham, and we'll have like you know, yeah. places like that, but nothing – no one's really smoking ham at barbecue places here. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not a big fan of uh, 
you know, sweet hams, like, you know, the honey glazed or whatever. Yeah. I'm just not. So I like the, just a regular old smoked ham and then these come out really well. So that's awesome. Well, how did, how did you get started? You got, it was from, from what I've read and what I've heard it San, you started in San Marcos, right? Or, and were you yeah, barbecuing you, as a kid? Were you doing that as a family thing? Yeah. So well, not necessarily as a family thing. Of course, my, my, my grandfather, my uncles, my dad, you know, they all, they all cook, you know, grilling or barbecuing, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of stuff. But um really i i grew up uh, grew up in san marcus so we would take i wouldn't say weekly pilgrimages but uh you know probably bi-weekly or at least once a month uh, to lockhart okay the family would go and we would get a big you know they don't have trays but it would be like a big piece of butcher paper mm-hmm. wrapped you know there a bunch of barbecue wrapped up in it and we'd set it on the table and you know kind of all have at it family style that's so great too we don't have that too <laughs> yeah it, it's you know it's an experience that i think uh it's really hard to achieve nowadays for sure because people don't necessarily um, understand the family style concepts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's getting better for sure, but especially with like Franklin and stuff like that, people kind of get it. But um, you know, back when we went, it was, it was, um, it's just what everybody did around here or, you know, around uh, San Marcos. That's what everybody did. And, and, you know, all the surrounding areas around Lockhart. But do you go with a certain, a certain restaurant you went to there or do you go to all? Yeah, we four? went to, we would go to Kreitz. Kreitz, okay. Uh, Kreitz was always our go-to, but it was a, in the original building where, where Smitty's is now. Oh, wow. Back then. That's where we, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was a little kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's class. That's cool. <laughs> Not many people could say they did that. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, you got that experience. And actually my, my favorite time of year to go was this time of year, you know, when it's cooler. Um, cause well, obviously, you know, waiting in line by the fires, is, is gets pretty hot, but just, you know, uh, when it's cold outside and you walk in and it warm, the fire warms you up and you just, the smells and everything is just a, a wonderful, it just takes me back to those, those times. But do you have a chance to, you're pretty far from it. Like, do you ever ch- get a chance to go back down there? Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually I've become, kind of friends with Roy because his uh his son-in-law uh is actually a good friend of mine we actually oh. worked at Sam's together it's kind of a small world but yeah so I, every time I go down I try to stop by and, and say hi and uh, it's been you know at least 20 minutes uh just talking to Roy in the office you're gonna get real special treatment down there now so that's really cool and what a what a special guy he is too yeah yeah and he's I mean, you know, just talking to him and and you know all the things you worry about in barbecue uh as a young guy you kind of see in him, he's like, yeah, you know, you kind of have to let those things go. And he's a wealth of knowledge, of mm-hmm. course, but um, just a great all around guy. Like you said, he's seen it all. So he's seen yeah, exactly. like different yeah. dips and weight. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, he, um, he's always very welcoming, you know, and him and I have something in common. He's like, you know, at first we're pretty shy people, <laughs> you know, um, just by nature. Mm-hmm. And I am for sure. Um, and so, he, he he said that it took him a long time to come out of a shell, you know, to actually be able to take pictures. But I always thought he was a mean guy, you know, growing up as a kid. I kind of thought he was like, gruff yeah. and kind of, yeah. Yeah, he always had a scowl on his face, you know, and, and it turns out is it because he, he didn't know how to um, talk to people, you know, because it, it just wasn't a thing. Even back then, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a thing like it is now. You know, everybody wants to meet the pit master and, yeah. you know, all that. It was it wasn't like that back then. It was kind of like they just stayed to themselves and did their job. Yeah, I know it's not like it's kind of off topic, but that is it's interesting how how different it is now. How people do yeah. want to take photos with the with the cook or the pitmaster, and, and it's yeah. it's like a celebrity thing. And like the fact that I'm interviewing you and you have a barbecue place, it's just it, this was this unheard of twenty years ago. Or oh yeah, yeah, for sure. But but it's it's really cool because you know then people like myself that might not have the marketing budget that some have, you know, we have another outlet to get our name out. Yeah, and I, and I think it's fun for people to see what you look like, to hear your story, to hear your voice, and then that way when they do eat eat your food or, or talk to you, they can say, hey, you know, I heard you talk about blah, blah, blah. You talked about a wagon when you were a kid. Like, it's just something stupid. Yeah, and yeah, it's, for it, sure. It, it yeah. makes it connect. I think it helps the connection. And for me, it gives me a chance to, like, selfishly to meet you now before I visit you. So that way, at least, you know, I've had, we've met before, and I, yeah, and I exactly. know more about your stuff, yeah. And I think uh, barbecue people are a lot more normal than people maybe think they are. For sure. You know, like everybody that I've met in the barbecue world is really down. And pretty much, I mean, there's exceptions, but pretty much everybody's down to earth. Most and, of them are, yeah. Um, are more than willing to take time if they have the time to talk. And, and really, because w- most of us enjoy um, what we're doing enough that we want to go meet other people that have the same interests. For sure. And so, you know, customers that come in have that same 
uh, common interest, you know, it's it's cool to hear their stories and, and stuff like that, you know. Without a, without a doubt. Okay, let's jump let's jump back to so when did you so you were you said you were working was it Sam Club, you said? Uh, so okay, so Sam Marcus is where I'm from. That's yeah. where we kind of started the story as, as a kid. You know, I was probably, probably eleven or twelve. I, I started messing around with brisket okay. actually. You know, just because you know, at, at going to Kreitz, you know, I always noticed that there was something different than what my you know my family was doing in the backyard. It just you know it was it it was just. I mean, we rarely had brisket unless we went to Kreitz. I mean, like Easter, maybe somebody would try a brisket mm -hmm. or something like that. But usually it was like chicken or ribs. Or, That's a little know, intimidating for a lot of people, too. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. That's kind of where it, it started is like me noticing that there was something different. And so once I realized that, I was like, I want to I want to be able to do that. That That's that's something that I really want to uh, learn to do. Wow. Young age. Uh, so, you know, throughout school and, and high school and stuff, I was always the kid that, like, we would go to tailgates and, and I would grill or, or whatever. You know, I was always cooking. I always loved the cooking channel and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So I always loved food in general. Um, so after high school, I didn't really want – I wasn't I wasn't a good school person, I guess. Um, like, I, I was smart, but I just – I didn't ever apply myself because nothing interested me. So uh, one day a, a guy from uh, – one of the color day schools, uh, Glory Court and Blue and Austin, uh, came in like as a recruiter kind of thing, and and I said, well, I guess that that's a that's another path I could take, you know. So I ended up going to color day school right out of high school. Um, in hindsight, I don't know that was the best move. I, I probably could have gotten the same knowledge uh, just working in a lot of restaurants, but but it, you know it, it, it's what happened. And you probably got some technique that maybe you would yeah. Have, yeah. Definitely, definitely technique is, is a, the, a, a great way of putting it because, um, yeah, that, that's all they're all about is technique. And, 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 it, and I use it in everyday, you know, uh, applications. After that, uh, I worked at a few restaurants, uh, Mexican restaurants and a few others. Um, and then I ended up at Sam's Club. Uh, actually, my, my buddy, um, he was like, hey, make better money over here and um, you know, I can get you the job. He was, he was like a supervisor at the time. Right. And we were in the, I actually started in the cafe area, you know, the pizzas and hot dogs and oh, okay. yeah, yeah. which was, which was, you know, kind of lame to me. Cause you know, I've had, I have this culinary degree or whatever, but you know, it, it paid. So, mm -hmm. um, and then probably about a year in, um, I had the opportunity to move to the meat department and, and they get paid fairly well in comparison to everybody else at the store. Yeah, that's what I've I started in there and and just kind of learned and learned there. I mean, it's it's all boxed uh, boxed beef and boxed pork, so it's not like it, you're breaking down whole like halves of. of uh, yeah, it's not hardcore but, butchery, but no, but, but you're it, cutting I mean, pieces, it's, it's right? Still, yeah, it's still you know it's still a good amount. You still use a bandsaw. You still you know you learn you learn quite a bit, and so um, yeah, I did that and I really enjoyed it. You know, it, it was decent money. Um, I, I really enjoyed it for the most part. Um, like every job, there's some parts that suck, but you know, um, yeah. but yeah, it was, it was a really good job. And then, you know, about four years doing that, I got to the point where, um, I was teaching veterans how to package stuff right and cut right. And it, I wasn't really learning anything anymore. And so I'm the kind of person when I, when you get stagnant, I just, I just don't really want to be in me. that situation. So I was at a cook off, I would do cook offs, you know, kind of, the. uh, scratch that itch, you know, um, did you have a small offset? We had, yeah, we had a, an offset that I actually, yeah, it was kind of a mess. I, I bought it. It was really just an old tank with some half-ass welds and, and <laughs> it was, it was, it was ba barely a, uh, considered a barbecue pit, I would say, <laughs> but it was, it was at the right price, which was like, I don't know, like three, 400 bucks. And, yeah. and uh, it was on a, trailer made out of like a bed frame or something anyways it was it was a really <laughs> real piece of junk and and luckily my at the time my my girlfriend's dad my was now my father-in-law uh he he's always been one of my number one fans you know or i guess you know one of my fans and uh he he knows how to weld and stuff so he really helped us out and and helped me kind of make it into what would work i guess mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what we started off doing cook-offs with. It was a, I mean, nothing special. It was like a, I think maybe a 150 gallon propane tank mm -hmm. um, with a square box, yeah, stack. Just kind of, you know, very, very basic. But um, we did okay doing the cook-offs. Like, how stuff. often yeah. were there other cook-offs for people that might not know? Are there cook-offs? Oh, man, often? there's a, 
yeah, there's cookoffs here in Texas every weekend, multiple places. I mean, there's probably ten a weekend, just in different cities, if not more. Oh. Just because it's such a, it, it. I mean, especially since the show Barbecue Pitmasters and all that uh, really glorified it. Um, it's become, yeah, it's something crazy. But yeah. yeah, so I mean, pretty much any given weekend, you can find a cookoff somewhere. Oh, yeah. Um, so we we were at one in San Marcos. Uh, we, me and my wife were actually living in Corpus at the time. I was working at Sam's Club in Corpus. I transferred down there. She was going to A and M Corpus. Okay. Um, so we always tried to find cookoffs near where we either lived or family lived. That way, we didn't have to get a hotel or anything like that. So uh, we did one in San Marcos, and Kent Black happened to be um, at this cookoff oh. at, uh, at, at the time, and um, he came by the tent and and tried the food, tried my my barbecue. And um, he was like, hey, well, I'm going to be opening up a spot here in San Marcos, um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, Kent Blacks. And, and you know, we're going to need pit masters. Are you interested in a job? Uh, I said, well, you know, I, at first I didn't really. I mean, we lived in Corpus. I was like, you know, probably not. But I was like, ah, I just got to entertain the idea. So, yeah, maybe, you know, we'll see. And uh, so we got back to Corpus and me and my wife started talking and, you know, we're just like, well. She was like, do you want to do it? And I said, yeah, I mean, I can, I guess. You know, I, I would like to get in the barbecue business, but, you know, we we, we live here. I, I'm not going to commute from Corpus to San Marcos. You know, it's it's a good three-hour, you know, distance. So um, we talked about it more and more. And, and uh, finally, you know, she said, I can do my the rest of my schooling online. Because she, she was, this was a, uh, she, she was going for her second uh, bachelor. So, okay. it, you know, she, she could finish the rest of it online. It wasn't anything crazy that she had to be there in Corpus. Um, and so, uh, we did, I interviewed for it. I got the job and, and we moved back to, um, San Marcos, uh, actually New Braunfels. We ended up in New Braunfels, okay. uh, which is right close to San Marcos. Um, and so I started working at, uh, Kent's. No, actually I, I started at Black's, the original Black's to kind of uh, train. Well, that makes sense. With the other pit guys and stuff, and um, and then once San Marcos opened, we moved over there. Um, I, I I don't know how long I worked there, maybe a year okay. there in San Marcos, and it just without going into great detail, it it wasn't working out. Okay, uh, as far as the people I worked with and and stuff like that. But um, so I, I tried to I tried to quit. They didn't really want me to quit. <laughs> Um, and so they offered me a little bit more money, uh, and a Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to like 2.30, uh, gig. And I said, well, I can do that. You know, it, that's definitely, you know, in, in, in the restaurant business, you don't get weekends and no, they're, never. they're basically offering me weekends and, and my kind of hours. I've always been an early, early bird. So anyway, so, uh, I go back to, I go back there and I worked there for about another year. Um, and, and long story short, I mean, it, it was it was a great experience. I got to I got to experience a lot more than I would have ever experienced. You probably otherwise. learned a lot, yeah. Yeah, and and the thing is, is, is I know I know probably a lot of people are going to take away that I learned everything I know from blacks, and and um, I think the the main thing I learned from blacks is is making sausage, hmm. um, because that's that's what I did a lot of time is make make sausage, and and um, the barbecue part of it, I really knew everything that they were doing and the pits that they were using. It wasn't the way that I wanted to do it. So when I when I would do stuff on my own, I was like, I want to open my own place so I can do it my way, you know. And they did so they I'm, have in the, I haven't been to the San Marcos location. Do they have the similar pits to the Lockhart location? Yeah, they have. Um, they have the same kind of pits, both offsets and rotisseries. Okay. Um, but so like I don't really care for the rotisseries. Mm -hmm. I think that's what the, one of my big issues was. There's nothing wrong with them, you know. People love them, but I just don't feel like you get the same, um, especially on the briskets, and uh, that you don't get the same smoke flavor. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you don't get smoke flavor. I'm saying you get a cleaner flavor from using an offset. Gotcha. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know. That, that's why I, I was just like, you know, th it's not what I want to do. You know, it's great. It works for them. That's awesome. You know, it, but there's something more that I want to do. Gotcha. Be, be, a, be a little bit more on the craft side of it. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I'm not talking bad about the family or anything like that. It doesn't sound family, like you are. They're, they're, they're a great family and they, they took care of me. 
you know, uh, when I told them that I wanted to go off on my own, they, you know, Kent sat me down and I think they were going to try to offer me a little bit more money to stay, but he, he, he knew I was serious and he said, well, I wish you all the luck in the world. And, and, you know, and we had a baby coming at the time. So, you know, he's like, you're kind of, you know, taking a big risk right now, but you know, that's fine. If that's what you, you feel like you need to do, then, you know, uh, we wish you luck and, you know, do your thing. So how, so how did you, where did you get your offset at that time? Like, so we had found some, some pits that, and, and, there's multiple people that make pits that look like the one that I got. Mm-hmm. Um, they're out of like Alabama and, and uh, I think they must be a kit or something that people buy and then weld together and then they, they resell them. That makes sense. Because they all look, they look, look all the same. It's like uh, the one I got it from was FMD outdoors, but there's like HBT smokers and there's a few others that are greasy Hill smokers. They all look the same. Interesting. Um, uh, so it was actually a reverse flow, but it had the, it had the capacity that I, I thought I needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, um, that was kind of a risk getting the, uh, the reverse flow cause I'd never used a reverse flow. It was always, you know, um, just kind of conventional, uh, offsets mm-hmm. or rotisseries that I'd use. So I bought it and it ended up being really, really great. I mean, I don't really care for, uh, reverse flows because of the plate that runs through. I don't know if you've ever used the reverse. I haven't. I've, I've seen them and I've talked to some people that. Yeah, there's a plate that runs down um, the whole, the length of the pit. Uh, they're probably about, well, about three quarters, uh, three quarters of the way down that runs underneath your, your grates. And then the heat runs under that, comes up and comes back out the stack, which is at the, the stack same is end by of the, the fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah by, above the firebox. So um, so all of your drippings, they, they fall down onto the onto that plate and you can kind of get some bitter flavor. So you have to clean that constantly and make sure your fire doesn't get too hot. Cause you'll definitely get some flare ups or some, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of a, a hassle. Yeah. I, I, I did it and, and it worked for what I needed and I made it work, but, uh, I definitely like the conventional <laughs> offsets. Um, but you know, there's people that are using them that are doing great. Like every maze, you know, they, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They have, I, I think they exclusively use uh, reverse flows and they, they do awesome. So. And that's what he's building because that's what he's comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. It, it, that's what it's all about. What, you know, what works for you. Interesting. So, so, so at that, so you, you got that from the, from Alabama and then mm-hmm. when did you, where did, did you find a specific location that you thought was going to work out? I found a location that we could afford. Uh, well, I mean, so really the whole time I was working at Blacks, I was kind of working on doing my own thing and we, we actually got a, a trailer. Um, and you know, of course I wanted to buy a trailer that was completely done, but that didn't happen. You know, we, we kind of had to work our way and, and we used the trailer that we had for competition. So it didn't have anything. It didn't have a sink in it. It didn't have oh, wow. flooring in it. I mean, it had a floor, but it did, it was just wood. It didn't have any kind of like, uh, mat flooring or anything like that. Um, little by little, I kind of worked on it. I put the flooring in myself, which I'm not in any way, shape or form a carpenter, but I, you know, it, I had to do it cause that's what needed to be done. So um i made it happen and and uh, you know little by little we added things to the trailer and we got to the point where we were like okay well we need a we need a window you know like a serving window and we need sinks and i can't do any of that so um and so you know of course we didn't have a great deal of you know uh extra cash laying around so um we were just trying to figure out how we were going to get this done uh and so my wife said, well, we can sell my cows that are out at my parents. Uh, and then, you know, we can use that money. And, and I was like, well, I don't know, you know, that, that, that's always a good reserve to have. But uh, so we, we, we ended up doing it. We sold, so we sold cows to finish out our food. How many, how many cows did she have? I think like two or three. Okay. So, I mean, you know, we're talking about, uh, I think like 2,500 bucks, maybe yeah. something like that. You're the first person I've talked to that's had to sell cows to for their barbecue joint. Yeah. And it's kind of a funny story, you know, sell cows to sell cows, you know? So, so we did that. And then we finally finished the trailer. That's when I, I told them at Blacks that I was going to do my own thing. And a buddy of mine that I worked at with Sam, at Sam's and got him a job at Blacks had a barbecue place at one time, uh, at, at a location. It's just like an old, uh, rundown bar that is not open. It's just, so we would use the parking lot. Okay. And uh, it was, it's kind of out of town, so it's out of the city limits, so you don't have as many restrictions, um, which was easier. And the rent was 50 bucks a week. Oh, wow. So to park a trailer there, and, you know, it wasn't, that's not too bad. No. We opened up. What were you selling and, at the beginning? Uh, We just did, I think, the, the 
uh, four basic kind of things. Uh, we did brisket, ribs, uh, sausage, and I think we were doing, maybe we were just doing the three, brisket, ribs, and sausage. I feel like we were doing something else, maybe turkey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pretty simple menu. Um, beans, potato salad, banana pudding. Um, that's kind of our base, basic menu. And, and uh, we were making our own pickles and all that stuff. So um, the, every, all, the, all the sides were made from scratch and everything like that. So, Do you remember what year this was, roughly? Uh, 2016. It was in uh, – we, our grand opening was uh, July, uh, June. Okay. Like June 25th, I think, 2016. And so I was open. And so we had the grand opening. It was great. And then after that, it kind of fell off a little bit. I mean, of course, my friends would come and, and stuff like that. But like I said, we're outside of town. So it wasn't like something that was really and And the road that we were on was like a uh, this highway 123. And so it's 70 miles an hour. We had a white trailer, so it didn't really stick out. <laughs> uh, you know, so we had a lot of things against us. Uh, I'm not making excuses. It's just, how, it's just how it was, and and so and nobody knew our name, and um, so you know it was it was really hard at first to try to get people to to come and 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 try it. Um, you know, like I said, I had my friends and family and stuff that would come, but it's hard to stay in business with those. You know, just that, and so uh, business was it was okay some days, and some days it was really bad. Um, but uh, so my son was born. August uh, 11th okay. so not too long after no. we, um, we opened so so we closed for that obviously and so I took I was gonna take the week off and then go back to work after that and so uh, about a, you know about a week after he was born I, I tried going back to <laughs> to the trailer and and I could just see we went to Sam's Club me and my wife and, and our new son and, and uh, we were buying everything and I could just see the look on my wife's face like yeah, what do you what am I going to do when you're gone you know kind of thing and so I said are, are you do you want me to do this or not because I was about to spend you know like like probably a thousand dollars at Sam's to for my next week of product you yeah. know and, and she said I just don't think you should do it so we put everything we had to walk through the store and put everything back and then we wow. sat down and we were just talking about you know what are we going to do um she was she was really worried about um she's going to have to go back to work after six weeks because she wasn't at her job long enough at the time to get a full, um, you know, leave for, oh. for, for that. Um, so she was going to have to go back to work at six weeks. I was going to be in the food trailer. So, um, my mom at the time was working. So, and, and that's really the only family that we had that could help watch, watch, uh, our son. So we didn't really know what we were going to do. Um, and so we started talking to Haley's parents. That's my wife, Haley. Uh, we talked, started talking to her parents and they said, well, why don't y'all move to Whitney? Um, you know, y'all have the food trailers mobile. Um, at the time her mom wasn't working. She was like, I can, I can watch, uh, Nolan. Nolan's our son. I can watch Nolan. Um, and then Haley's great grandmother, which she's pretty young for a great grandmother. She also uh, <laughs> helps out too. So, um, you know, we talked about it and we said, yeah, why not? I mean, we're mobile. So, I mean, there's really, you know, no, Nothing is stopping us, and all the regulations we had to follow in Guadalupe County transferred over to Hill County. Oh, that's perfect. All the, all the, so really, there was no, nothing that was really too hard, um, other than getting a city permit here in Whitney, which is like ninety bucks for every every hundred and twenty days. So and Whitney is south of Fort Worth and Dallas, right? Yeah, yeah, a um, little bit south west. West, yeah. I think okay. Yeah, so yeah, um, so we moved to Whitney. Uh, I think in November of 16. So this is a very short timeline. Yeah. yeah. Um, and no, it was, it was before that it was, uh, we, we, we opened up October 28th okay. in Whitney. Uh, wow, that's pretty quick. I remember that cause it's my wife's birthday. So we opened that day and, um, it was, it was kind of slow, I guess at the beginning, but people, the good thing about small towns, people are pretty nosy. And I'm not, I say that in a good way. Yeah, you know, no, that's a good people, way. People are like, well, what is that? What is that? What is that? You know, and people start talking and people try the barbecue and they love it. And then they tell other people. And um, my wife uh, pretty much knows everybody in town too, or her family, somebody in her family does, because, you know, it's a small town. So everybody knows everybody kind of thing. So um, it was a little bit easier to get word out about our barbecue. And, and, and then obviously, yeah, it was just kind of a, a whirlwind once Daniel Vaughn came. So. 
how how far off did he because because he was probably scouting out at that time yeah right? so october we opened that december he came uh and it was a like nasty wet rainy day and it was yeah it was bad um it's funny you probably know exactly everything about every detail <laughs> yeah yeah it was yeah for sure um it, yeah it was it was i was i remember me and my wife were working in the trailer that day and uh um there was i was waiting on somebody at the window and out of my out of the corner of my eye i saw somebody in line i was like okay cool we're gonna have a little bit of a line and so i look and i was like oh crap and I tell I told my wife I said hey, Daniel Vaughn is here. She's like, who's that? <laughs> that uh, he's the uh, the barbecue editor for Texas Monthly. And she goes, oh, okay, okay. So you know, I'm I'm a nervous wreck pretty much. You know, um, just because I you know not Daniel's a great person and he's not like you know intimidating necessarily, but what he represents is pretty mm-hmm. intimidating. And so uh, you know, we served him and and. Uh, he ate and he and then he came back up to the window and introduced himself formally. And uh and he said, Do you mind if I do a little bit of a you know, an interview? So he put his phone on the on the um shelf of the window and we didn't have anybody else that day. It was it, like I said, it was a nasty day. Not many people were coming out to eat barbecue at a food trailer. Mm-hmm. Um and so he did a little impromptu uh interview and then yeah, that was really cool and I thought kind of nothing of it after after the fact, and then he he messaged me. I don't know, maybe the next day. He said, "Hey, look at hey, look at my blog here in a, in a few hours." And uh, so he wrote, so he wrote up something pretty quick. Yeah, he wrote up something that that day or the next day or whatever. And so yeah, it was really cool. How quickly did things? Because I know things once you made the list, things changed. Yeah. So the that initial interview kind of got things got things rolling a little bit, you know. Um, people were, some people that, you know, really followed him would come out of the Metroplex and, and come see us. And, and then, you know, the good thing was that we always had a consistent, um, uh, business within Whitney. So it, as a food trailer, we could survive, um, because there wasn't much overhead. Uh, we found another spot that was owned by a, fa- uh, a family friend. So she didn't really charge us much in rent. Um, you know, so it was, it wasn't bad. Um, and then we started getting phone calls from Texas Monthly doing kind of like fact checking, you know. Um, and so I was like, that's really odd. Why, you know, why would they want to know this stuff? The final one was like a call from Wyatt McSpadden. Ah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and for people who don't know, he's a, he's a, a well-known barbecue photographer. And so it was kind of surreal, you know. Um, he calls me, so we were open at the time, Thursdays, Fridays, and maybe Saturdays at night. So he calls me on a Wednesday at like 11 in the morning, um, says, hey, this is Wyatt McSpadden. Uh, I'm like, wait, what? You know, I, I, it didn't even hit me at first. Like, I was like, I don't I don't know who, who this is, like, on my phone, you know. And so um, he, uh, he tells me, hey, I want to go shoot over there. And I said, okay, when do you want to shoot? So oh, I'm going to be there about five in the morning. And I was thinking to myself, oh, man, like, I don't have the trailer in any way, shape, or form to be picked, you know, to <laughs> have pictures taken. And so... Uh, he loves that early morning sunrise. He, like, yeah, that's definitely. His specialty. He could have called me, like, on Monday <laughs> instead of the day before. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was kind of, yeah, it was definitely like, oh, man, I need to really get that. Uh, I, so we had, I had my uh, pit moved to a certain place, uh, and so it wasn't like in the way. And, oh, that's funny. Uh, my father-in-law is, you know, helping me mow the place and make sure everything looks good. It's, it was, it was just funny, you know, uh, getting it all ready, and then uh, on top of that, prepping for the next day and cooking and, and all that stuff. So, um, and, and when yeah, that happened, it was kind of like I'm here for a reason. So you know. A moment, it, there's a momentum happening. Something. I'm not. Happening. I'm not here just because I want to take pictures. You know, right. there's a there's somebody that you know wants me to take these pictures, and you know, uh, so that's kind of when we knew we were going to be on the list, and and you know things were going to get crazy for us. So you found out with Sunny, right, that you were on the list. Is that? No, 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 no. We uh, we had talked about it because. Uh, I was getting those phone calls. Okay, okay. You had talked about yeah. the calm before the storm kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so when and then when when Wyatt 
was uh there that's when like i really knew okay. and i was like sunny it's gonna happen i think but we we were all holding our breath until the actual magazine came out and the article came out and and, and even though you know i was like they wouldn't have done all this stuff otherwise but i don't want to like you know tell everybody i'm gonna be on this list mm. and then you know womp, womp, womp. Hey, exactly and, and then what how and how did you thought get purchase a, a moberg too is that oh uh so so okay um me and Brett uh, from Brett's Barbecue, Backyard yeah. Barbecue, um, we became, you know, uh, not I wouldn't say necessarily friends at the time, but we were acquaintances um, because of uh, um, barbecue cook-offs. Yeah. And so I noticed that Brett was always winning uh, with his brisket. And so with the cook-offs, I could never get my brisket right because I think I did it just a little bit too traditional. You know, uh, competition barbecue is so much different than, you know, Texas-style barbecue. For sure. And so, um, you know, I reached out to him, and we and we got to talking about that. And so so I kind of had another barbecue friend, I guess. And, and so um, he got his, I think, it, uh, his 500 built. It's kind of a bluish uh, gray one. And it looks similar to an Austin Smokeworks, but it, it it was in ways it was pretty different. And so I said, well, who built that? Who built that pit for you? And and he he introduced me to Sonny, you know, through I think a Facebook Messenger or something like that. And so uh, so me and Sonny actually talked for a very long time about doing a pit. Um, I mean, probably a year or two, I would say. Oh wow. Um, yeah, it was a long time and it was, I just never had the cash. Um, and I ended up finding, uh, like a, like a weird sized, uh, propane tank, or we really don't know what kind of tank it is, uh, but it, it looked like a propane tank. It was on Craigslist for 200 bucks, which is dirt cheap, uh, for this size. Um, and so I was like, there has to be something wrong with it. Sure enough, we get there and it was all dented at one end and on the back. So I almost didn't pick it up. Um, but I did end up taking it and we put it out at my um, my wife's parents' place. They have 10 acres and um, it sat there for a little while. And then I finally reached out to Sonny and said, hey, can you do something with this tank? You know, it has some dents and this and that. And he said, well, why don't you bring it to me? And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do I sent him pictures and stuff and he's I'm pretty sure I can get it done. And, you know, we talked on a price. We agreed on a on a price. And because this is when we were kind of getting the whiff of we might be on in texas monthly so we need to really move on getting a bigger pit i took those to him and yeah, he said oh we can make it work so he starts building this thing and uh you know brett had started getting him on social media a little bit more than he was um and you know i told him i was like you know instagram is where it's at as far as you know really getting people catching people's eye you know mm -hmm. it's, a, it's such a visual world now and so uh, I would post it on Instagram when he would send me update pictures, right? So I started posting on Instagram, hey, this is our new pit built by blah, 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 or whatever. And people started contacting me. To contact. No, no. They used to, they would ask me, can you build me a pit? Oh, I'm, like, I'm not building the pit. You know? oh, that's funny. And, but I would give them uh, Sonny's number. And one of them was actually uh, – Steven Rossler from Rossler's Blue Cord Barbecue. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're, we've been emailing. We're going to talk next week. Yeah, so me and Steven were he, – he called me and, or he messaged me. He said, uh, who built your pit for you? And I, I got him with Sonny and stuff. So he's been on the list since back, way back then to get his pit built. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it, it, I've actually met people just through that, through, through Sonny's pits and stuff like that. So that's really cool. But, yeah, so I actually have the first commercial – Moberg smoker. That's what uh, I thought. Brett, Brett has the first, um, like one that he built, like on a trailer, and, and he used it for comps. But I was the first one to use them at a at a restaurant. Um, was that completed prior to the magazine coming out? Yes, like the week before. <laughs> we had a uh, um, a festival, the Pints in the Park in, in Waco, which is probably the about forty five minutes out that's the, from where we're at in Whitney. And so I wanted it for that, and then the list was going to come out. That was on a Saturday, and the list was going to come out on Monday. So, yeah, we got it just before that. So um, we got it just in time. <laughs> what was that like when the list came out? Uh, well, we ended up being – I can't remember why, but we were closed for the week that it actually came out. Um, but then – so people were calling us, calling us, calling us, like, why are you not open, blah, 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 blah. 
So we actually were moving spots. That's what it was. We were moving spots where we had the trailer. We were moving to a spot that had a building on the property that we were going to renovate over time. Mm-hmm. Well, when we moved to that property, we didn't realize that it turns into a swamp. Like once when it rains. And so, of course, the first week we're open over there, it's raining. And <laughs> and so there was some parking that wasn't underwater, but the majority of where we were going to have people park was underwater. Oh. So people are parking on the side of the highway, uh, Highway 22 here in Whitney, which is the busiest road here in Whitney. Uh, um, you know, people come from like uh, a couple of towns, bigger towns, you know, through Whitney. So it, it's you know, it's pretty dangerous to have people parking on the side and, and crossing over. Oh. And and I was like, nah, we got we have to do something else. This is this isn't going to work. I don't want somebody to get killed over over barbecue. That's yeah. stupid. So luckily, at the time, there was a building available that um, at first the owner didn't want to rent it to us for what we could afford. But as he saw our popularity growing, he was I think he, he realized there was potential for us to buy the building or whatever. And so uh he ended up making me a deal to have a kind of an increasing rent um as our business got bigger and that way we could get started makes sense so that so we moved into the building not long after the list i I don't really know what exactly the timeline was probably like a month um after we made the list and then we would have lines out the door and and you know it was just it was craziness for probably until the end of summer and like once august hit it was kind of done yeah. But but people had the passport, the Yeti passport, and all. That yeah, kind. so so that was like May through August. It was just crazy, just just nuts. And yeah, people would people that had never heard of Whitney, and and you know uh, the the news local newspaper wanted to do a story, and That's you know crazy. it was all you know it was really cool to really bring uh, the people to Whitney that had never even heard of it. And, you know, it wasn't usually if people had heard of Whitney, it was the lake here. That, that was the big thing. But um, they're like, we didn't even know there was a barbecue place in Whitney. And, you know, especially not one that, you know, was was that good. And yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, it's been it's been crazy uh, ever since then. But, um, yeah, the, the real really crazy time was yeah, like May through August. Um, it was just nuts. So the timing was perfect too to get a a, a Moberg smoker. Did, did, it was a different. Did it feel different cooking on it? Oh yeah, yeah. It, Mobergs are just, and I have the first, like I said, the first commercial one. So and nobody else had one that could really tell me. So Brett was like pretty much the only one I could talk to if, if I was asking any questions. But really, they're they're not really hard to use at all. They're they're pretty uh, for an offset you know, um, as easy as an offset can be, uh, to use they're, they're great. I mean, they amazing draw, um, the, the craftsmanship on them is, and I, I know you probably think I'm blowing smoke up your ass or whatever, but about these pits, because I tell everybody about them, but, um, the Sonny, he just does such great work. I mean, he takes pride in it just like we do the barbecue. Uh, well, if people, if people follow his Instagram, you could see close-ups of yeah. the welds and like, take, he does take the time. Yeah. I mean, he, he grinds, he grinds everything to, to make it look, you know, perfect. And, and, uh, his, I mean, his wells are beautiful as they are, but then, you know, like on the edges of his firebox, he makes them look, you know, very smooth and, mm-hmm. uh, the gaps on the doors are almost non-existent. Um, you know, uh, just the lines are straight. Really There's pretty, no stitch yeah. welding. You just, you know, everything that, and for the price, I mean, I know there's people that do do cheaper um, pits, but I, I feel like I, you see them and you can tell mm. that 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 love is not there. Their their skill is there, but the love is not there. Right. I think that's what makes the difference, you know. And and um, they don't. I'm not taking anything away from any other pit builders, but Sonny. He's a special person. Yeah, you know, he's a, and I I had the pleasure. Uh, you might have seen the interview. I uh, talking to him for an hour was was one of the the greatest things I did this year because he's such a kind human. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, he he's a he's a very special person. We've become um, good buddies, and uh, I was actually texting him this morning, and I was going to go see him this afternoon. I'm headed to San Marcos, and I was going to stop in Dripping Springs to see him, but he's he's actually up uh, in Fort Worth, so oh, or not okay. Fort Worth, uh, up in Grapevine, so. Oh. I don't get to see him. I was looking forward to that, but 
uh, we, the thing is, is like once we, I think I, I, I mess up his schedule anyways, because once I show up at his shop, we're talking for about an hour or two. Yeah, definitely. So I, <laughs> I, Puts I, him a little behind. I keep him from his, from his uh, tight schedule. So let's, let's talk about where you are right now and what you're serving right now, what people could expect in the hours too. Yeah. Um, so right now we're in Whitney, we're open, um, Thursday through Sunday. Okay. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're open 11 to four until, or, and all, all, all times are, they might change if we sell out early, yeah. it, you know, it doesn't always happen, but it happens. Um, and then uh, Sunday is 11 to two. Okay. So just a real, real short day, just for our, our little church crowd that we get. And then, you know, some out of town folks right now we're serving, uh, kind of a ba- not basic menu, but we're serving brisket, ribs, sausage, turkey, chicken, um, we uh, we make our own sausage in house. We make a regular and a jalapeno cheese uh, on a regular basis. Sometimes we change it up and throw a different kind of sausage in. I was going to ask you. Uh, um, the one thing that we're doing a little bit different, or not the one thing, but one of the things that we're doing a little bit different. We do got to eat us on Friday. We started that a while back. Uh, um, so good. And uh, you know, people have really gone crazy over that. Yeah, you know, I always loved carnitas growing up, and and. Uh, this is kind of a mix up of ways to do it because I don't, so Valentina's does a great carnita, but it's more like a pulled. Um, and, uh, it's great. Like I said, but I wanted to be different. Gotcha. I purposely wanted to be different. I didn't want to replicate anything that Miguel's doing. Cause he's, his barbecue is amazing. <laughs> yeah, um, one of my favorite places, but anyways, um, so we did these carnitas and originally we were using, the trimmings from uh our ribs Mm. it was something we weren't using much of and and so we would throw some of it in sausage some of it would go into these carnitas Mm. and as they gained popularity uh we started using a certain part of the pork butt i don't want to give it away but we we use a certain part of the pork butt Mm -hmm. um that that we cut off before we uh, season them to to make pulled pork uh and we save those up for friday um so we use it all on friday And that's our day that we do carnitas. We started making our own homemade flour tortillas. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is that every, an everyday thing? That is an everyday thing, but there's a very limited supply because I am, uh, me and one other person at the restaurant actually make the dough and I make the dough balls. So like I, on top of barbecue and all the meats, I have to spend about 30 minutes just uh, balling that's, up these tortillas, which is a lot of time. It's labor intensive. Yeah. So we do about 120 tortillas a day. Um, which isn't much, 10 dozen, but, um, you know, their quality, um, and that, and really the, the story about those is that that was almost out of necessity for myself because being from San Marcos, being San Marcos, you're between Austin and San Antonio. So really like, if you don't have a good homemade tortilla, you're pretty irre- irrelevant in the Tex-Mex world. <laughs> and then, so I grew up eating my grandma's and, and you know, certain restaurants that always had great flour tortillas. So when I moved here to Whitney, it's not so important. You're kind of it's all country folks, um, not not a huge Hispanic population, so you can get away with um, store bought mm-hmm. and you know you just grill them and they kind of look they kind of look like they're homemade. But I, I definitely knew the difference, and so I started playing with the my grandma's recipe, uh, trying to get it right. And so um, rolling out rolling them out was always the hard part. And so once I got a tortilla press, um, that kind of changed the game, and and we uh, started making them and. and we were using a Crisco originally as the lard in it, uh, but then we started rendering down uh, brisket fat. Oh. And so uh, we were like, what are we going to do with brisket fat? And actually, um, Adam from Adamson Barbecue, he had mentioned uh, like something about they use it in their bread. Adamson Barbecue up in Toronto? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We you know um, talk here and there. I wouldn't say we're, we're good buddies, but we you know here and there we've talked. He's a generous, open guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he 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 had just mentioned I don't know what we were talking. I guess we were talking about rendering down brisket fat, and he said they use it in their bread. Oh, so that got me thinking. I was like, why can't I use it in tortillas? So we ended up doing it, and man, there people <laughs> just go crazy over these things. And, and don't get me wrong, they are they are amazing, oh. and and that is one thing. I'm I'm a pretty humble person, but these are pretty. Oh. Pretty amazing things. As, as simple as a tortilla is, it, it can make all the difference in the world as far as what you put in it. You know, uh, no. Michael, why'd you tell me that? I'm so. <laughs> so yeah, no people. People are blown away, and and it's it's really cool that that I can, and that's part of what I what I wanted to do the whole time, 
is to really mix in my personal um, like culture into it and so like we do on on saturdays we do spanish rice um we try to do like uh other tacos um to to kind of a little bit more influence but like i said not a huge hispanic population so it's a little harder to work that stuff in but people are people are getting it so so with the tortillas is that like a side thing or do you do tacos every day so we do tacos every day it's not a menu item it's kind of a secret menu item okay it's kind of like you know if you know you know if you don't you don't it, you, the way it usually works is like somebody that does know will order it and then like everybody in line after them of course it's like oh i want those i want those. you'll see it on a trade you're like i gotta have it yeah and so that's usually how it works friday is like the day that we're known for it's okay it's taco day it's got to eat this taco mm-hmm. day that's that's the day but yeah we actually have tacos every day it'll, it'll either be brisket or pulled pork uh we'll do that or we've had people do turkey tacos or sausage tacos but usually it's uh pulled pork or brisket wow that's great so what yeah. sides do you guys have um we have beans potato salad uh coleslaw and all, all of them are made for, from scratch in house um we have jalapeno cream corn, which is probably our most popular. That um, sounds good. It, yeah, it, it's um, it's very unique to the way the way that we do it is is really unique. Um, I know a lot of people do jalapeno cream corn, but it's it's people love this stuff. Um, yeah. We do Spanish rice on Saturdays. Uh, we do a beef rib navy bean on Sundays because uh, usually we have beef rib left over on Saturday, so we throw it in some navy beans, and they're amazing. <sighs> We we try different sides here and there, but that's that's kind of our our go tos. Um, yeah, banana pudding, right? You said you have banana pudding. Yeah, banana pudding is is definitely. If we didn't have banana pudding and and pickles, people would just lose their <laughs> lose their minds. They're okay. They're not. I mean, they're upset when we're out of brisket. But if we ever don't have pickles or don't have a banana pudding, they're pretty really upset. You know. Yeah, we make our own pickles. We make our own jalapenos. Make a spicy pickle. Um, all of that's made in house. Everything as much as possible is made in house. Um, uh, which is very labor intensive and very um, costly, but it makes it worth it. How do you have much seating? We have about inside. We probably have about 40, 50 seats oh, on, and the outside, maybe another 30. So yeah, it's, it's not a, a huge, huge place, but it's, 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 it's a good size. place. yeah, it works for what, what we, what we need it for, you know? Uh, and, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. And um, being in Whitney, uh is also just it's it's kind of hard because people there's not there's no reason really to go through whitney unless you're coming here to eat barbecue um uh, and so when people make road trips they have to make special like stops here you know but then once they have it they make a reason to come out here that's no, worth it, and it sounds worth it, and, and and for good barbecue, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, I'm I'm a barbecue nut myself. Uh, so what's your last name is pronounced how? So my my last name is Wyant. Wyant. Uh, Wyant, like W Y O N T, but the like if the O was an A, Wyant. Okay. Wyant. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the Florida's name comes from my mother. Uh, that's my mother's maiden. Okay, name. good. That's what my question uh, was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's where that comes from. I know a lot of people are like, well, "Are you Mr. Florida's?" I'm like, "Well, no," but you know, and I explain, and they're okay, okay, I get it. But um, that's the family that I grew up around. Um, mostly is, is my mother's family and. Um, at the time that we were talking about opening the restaurant, uh, there was some stuff going on. My, my uncle had been diagnosed with uh, ALS at the time. My grandma was getting, getting older. And, um, but also, I mean, on top of all that stuff, my, my family's pretty, I mean, it, it was a pretty, um, pretty well-known family in San Marcos, especially back in the seventies and eighties. My grandfather was actually mayor of San Marcos at one time oh, wow. in the seventies. And so we had we had pretty deep roots in San Marcos. And so with all of those factors, uh, it just kind of made sense. And and it also keeps me um, keeps me striving for excellence because I'm very proud of that name. And I want to honor that name for sure. Wow, that's so great. What a what an interesting story. Honestly, I did not know a lot of pieces of that story. So that's yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that's that's I mean, anybody that's come to the restaurant and will sit with me and talk to me and wants to know, you know, I've told them that same thing. And and it's really um, it's been a crazy ride. And, and you know, on the, especially on the days that I'm really down and, and things aren't great, you know, because everything you see on Instagram uh, for everybody is the good days. Of course. But the bad days don't get shown as much and, and there are a lot of bad days uh, especially as a small business owner you know yeah. just just because that's how business is mm-hmm. you know 
Um, the great times are great. Bad times can be bad. But um, what keeps me going is, is my family, first of all, um, you know, my, my wife and my son. And but just knowing that I need to honor that name and make sure that the quality stays great and uh, customer customer service stays great and all of that in, in combination because it's not just the food. Um, it's it's how you treat people and the experience that they have at your restaurant, I not agree. just the food, but, but how your employees treat them. And, you know, did they feel like they're at home? Because that's, that's, that's the feel that I want them to feel. I want to feel, I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to feel like this is my family. You know, we have so many regulars that they're like family. We know their name, you know, know my name. And they come, there's one guy, his name's Jerry. He comes in every single day that we're open. And he, he's missed since the beginning in the trailer. He's missed probably four days. That's amazing. And, 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 and when he does miss, he lets us know and he's going to, he, he takes some, so he'll have some, uh, you know, at home or wherever they're going on vacation or whatever, he'll take it with him. So he makes sure he gets his wow. fix every day. That's amazing. He's your biggest fan. That's amazing. Yeah, no, he's, he's a great guy, but, but we have so many, so many customers like that, that are just super fans of us. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's just a really great feeling to, yeah, I make barbecue for a living, but it almost like you're, you're changing, not changing lives, but you're, you're, you're touching people's lives, you know, you're, and you're, you're, added a, to part, right. you're a part of it, yeah. you know, so it's really cool. And, and, and just, just because for those slow days that maybe people can come, where, what, how far away are you from, from Dallas and Fort Worth and how, and other, uh, and other cities in Austin? Uh, so Austin, we're probably about an hour and a half two hours okay. not, not too horribly far okay. um we're really close to fort worth it may be about 45 minutes to an hour okay dallas about an hour hour okay. and 15 depending on what part of dallas um so not not too not terribly far, far from anywhere and there's some good sized cities burles and waco um that are they're a little bit closer that, that are pretty big places where people live i guess <laughs> yeah. so so if, if people are doing like a barbecue concentrations, that's what concentrations, concentrations. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, yeah my head's a little cloudy today too allergies are uh, so so if people are making barbecue runs it's kind of perfect to come through yeah definitely and, and you know people um they'll hit us there's one in crescent which is um barbecue on the brazos mm -hmm. and there's one uh in waxahachie i think i think is it uh i'm, I'm this is horrible that i don't know um top five maybe mm -hmm. or something like that yeah i think that's called it, yeah it, yeah, it's it's in, in um, and the reason I don't know is because I never get to go out and eat barbecue. <laughs> That's that. But uh, but yeah, so they they'll um, they'll say, oh, we're doing this trip, and it's always usually that trip. Um, very rarely is it any other trip, unless you know they're just coming to see us uh, exclusively, or they're headed up to Fort Worth or Dallas. Yeah, yeah. So. But if you're if you're flying in for business, it's an easy, and you're open at eleven o'clock from Thursday to mm -hmm. Sunday, right? Yeah, no, it's it's really it's really once people realize our hours and realize where we are, they're like, oh, it's really not that far, you know. When you see it on a map, it's kind of like, oh, that's that's pretty far off the beaten trail, but but it's really not that far. And and if you take the back roads, it's actually a really beautiful drive. I know a lot of people that come the back roads from Fort Worth, um, and they'll even take the back roads and go to like Belton, go to Miller's. Mm -hmm. So that that drive is if anybody's looking for a really beautiful scenic drive out in the country. Yeah, you take Fort Worth to Whitney, and then Whitney to Belton, all back roads, and it's it's really nice. That's actually when I've drawn out some maps on where I want to go. That's I've mm -hmm. done that your place to Miller's, like a, that's sort of yeah. That's oh, it's a, it's a beautiful. If you take the back roads, a beautiful drive, and and uh, when I go like probably today, I'll probably take that road and stop in at Miller's and and see Amadeo and uh, get some desserts and stuff because so, that's. A wonderful things their their dessert there's a dessert counter i mean yeah, their their that's too, like a whole but, other business but, that's but yeah yeah their dessert counter is just insane excellent well, well thank you michael for taking the time and and congratulations on i i haven't spoken to you since you, you made the list so it's it was a little while back but but on all your success now and i i i hope that people from this and just in general watching you and learning more about you want to visit you and meet you and, and eat your food yeah, and we have some pretty big things planned for uh, 2019. I'm not going to give too much away, but we have some some big things that we um, we're working on for 2019 uh, that I think is going to be an exciting time for Flores Barbecue. So, because um, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Stay tuned. Follow your Instagram. Mm -hmm, exactly. Well, good morning again, Michael. How you doing?
How's it going, Kevin? It's going well. Uh, I guess um, it's a little bit has happened since our last interview, and I, I've taken a little time to edit it. So uh, I wanted to give people a little bit of a heads up as to what's what's on the horizon, uh, the immediate horizon. What's going on? Uh, well, we decided uh, to move to Fort Worth, uh, the business itself. Um, so uh, that's, I mean, a kind of a really big move mm-hmm. uh, for us, and uh, we'll be in a really cool part of town. Um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really cool project to work on. Um, that's kind of what I alluded to last time mm-hmm. when we were talking, uh, but I couldn't really put out the details because nothing was concrete at that time. So, what's the time frame for this? So we 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 just closed February third here in Whitney. Mm-hmm. So we'll be working on getting equipment out of here, selling certain equipment that we have. Um, also, uh, work on getting a new food trailer to put there at, at uh, it's called the uh, the trailhead at Clear Fork. Okay, trailhead at Clear Fork. I think I read that. Yeah, we'll be getting a new food trailer and be setting that up hopefully by April. Okay, so we're shooting for like the. F- first or second weekend of april that's okay. what we're shooting for okay so if that happens uh that's a pretty quick turnaround yeah yeah that's it <laughs> being mid-february right now yeah exactly so uh once we get all that figured out then we'll have the food trailer open um we're probably gonna start out slow one day a week like probably just saturday and then hopefully m- work our way to about four days a week okay um it'd be like thursday through sunday like we do here or we have done here in whitney um, and then just keep it at that uh, until next January is what they're what we're shooting for as far as uh, having a building ready to ready to roll. Okay, is it a complete new construction or is it? A, yeah, is it... It's, it's it's from the ground up. It'll be brand new to you know to Fort Worth. It'll be it'll be a beautiful brand new floors barbecue. Oh wow! How exciting is that? Yeah, it's it's surreal for sure. That's crazy. Do you do you have any specifics at all on the size or roughly what size it's going to be? Around three thousand square foot, okay. uh, between two hundred and sixty to three hundred seats. That's good size. Yeah, it's a good size. It's not a giant restaurant, but it's it's a good size restaurant. Mm-hmm. No, that's a decent size. And we'll and when yeah. when that happens, will you be open five six days a week? Do you think we plan as of right now, and and, and probably be kind of the same way as we kind of. Uh, did in, it we're going to do in the trailer is kind of work our way up. I mean, we'll probably start about four or five days a week and okay. then hopefully be open seven days a week um, all day long. So that's our plan, but we kind of want to walk into it rather than, you know, yeah. run into it. And at first, do you think you'll just do lunch and then lunch and dinner kind of thing? or um, We're not real sure. Probably just kind of see where the, the run out or the sell out point is and just kind of keep pushing that until we can make enough for no, lunch and dinner and then even do some breakfast Are you gonna have yeah. to get do you have to get any more smokers because of this or yeah we're gonna get a couple more uh thousand gallon so i have i have a thousand gallon smoker here uh in whitney which we're gonna take over there my 750 that i have currently is gonna be kind of our catering yeah. slash like special events pit because it's on a trailer and it has a top on it and everything already so that makes sense with that deal um, and then, so we're going to order two more thousand gallons from, uh, Sunny Moberg. Uh, and then I believe we're probably going to be putting an oiler in for like our skinny meats, meaning like ribs and turkey mm-hmm. and like that. Um, just really that's, that's more so like it takes up a smaller footprint and you know, those meats I'm not as a purist about, you know, like I, I brisket, like I, I told the investors and, and everybody else, I was like, I'm, I'm not sacrificing the brisket it has to be on an offset you know so yeah yeah no that's great that's and, and, and it makes sense a lot uh, other people are doing that same method where they're using the oiler for those skinny meats yeah exactly and, and it, it's, so, it's working out great and they're making fantastic food that's wow that's how exciting and how crazy that's will you have to move to make this work or well from our house right now it's right at an hour's drive okay. so it's not terribly far i mean and, and that's that's just distance. Not there's no traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty dry probably. It's not too bad. I'm probably going to commute for a good while, uh, but we're planning on getting a small apartment over there so I can just have a place to crash. You know, the few hours that I get to sleep or whatever. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I'm going to be commuting at least for for the time being and while we're in the trailer and stuff like that. And then once we, we're probably going to look at it a little bit closer once we open the brick and mortar because that, that's going to be a lot more hours. Um, yeah, a lot more different hours, yeah. That'll yeah, make a lot more meat eating uh, be in Fort Worth. So, and the investors are they? Um, they're tied to Lambert's, right? 
yeah, uh, Lou Lambert is, is part of it. Um, some of the developers there, um, it, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to give too specific, yeah, yeah, too yeah, specific yeah. On it, but, but yeah, Lou Lambert, his restaurant group is, is what's kind of, uh, the driving force behind the design of the kitchens and, and, uh, helping with menu and stuff like, Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's coming up with, I'm creating the menu of course. And it's going to be a lot of, well, pretty much all of our same things that we have now, uh, as far as meats and sides, but we're going to add, um, some sides add more Tex-Mex into it, more tacos, you know, some, some, uh, live fire, you know, uh, direct, direct oh, cool. cookie. Uh-huh. So we have, we have a lot of big plans for it, but that's kind of all in my corner as far as like, they give me free reign of whatever I want to do as far as, um, food wise, they're just giving me guidance on how to, how to do it on a big scale. You know, I mean, you know, it's just, it's going to be such a, um, a, a learning curve that that I'm really fortunate to have the group of people that I have behind me because I've done research on you know Lou and and stuff and and I mean he has a great reputation and I mean he's just a wealth of knowledge I'm really, sharp guy yeah yeah I'm I'm really honored to work with him and then we he also has his right hand man uh, Chris uh, which is going to be basically our our front of the house uh, manager GM um, but he's his his specialty is bar so he's going to be making some really cool uh, drinks and craft cocktails and, and make sure that, you know, we have all the good stuff to go with. Uh, That'll be great market. to have that as a compliment. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like, like I said, we have a great team that we're, we're putting together already. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, really exciting. Really. It, it's kind of a, a daunting task. You know, it's kind of like, uh, it, it seems real. like, yeah, it's, it's like a Goliath, but it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, we're going to take it head on and, and really, you know, uh, seize the opportunity for sure. Well, that's, that's so awesome. I, I, and everyone's so excited. That's it's so, I can't like, I'd love to, to check back with you in the fall. So that way kind of see how things are rolling, getting closer to that date. Yeah, for sure. And, and the cool thing is, is we're going to be, we're going to have the food trailer right next to where the building will be built. So people can actually see the process, Lots you know, see, progress, you yeah. see how far we are and, you know, see how cool it's going to be and, and be part and of all it. that. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that and that's kind of the the reasoning why we we decided to close up shop here in in Whitney. Um, don't get me wrong, Whitney has been great, but but I think it's really important that we uh, start building up our clientele there and kind of you know get our story out there and, and really um, try to try to have as much business as we can right off when we open the brick and mortar because uh, overhead's going to go up just a touch yeah yeah definitely <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do we'll do our job to, to promote you as much as possible so that way yeah uh, and we and the the amount of support that we've had just, i mean from the locals to people in fort worth to you know all over the metroplex and waco and you know, when we announced that we were we were going to close up shop here, people just went nuts and like they're stocking up and you know making sure that they have enough to get them until get them through April. And, oh, that's you know, so funny. Uh, no, but it's it's been really amazing, almost emotional at times. You know, to see you know just how much people um, really love and support us because I mean, people are telling us so we're proud of you. Yeah, almost like almost they're like they're fam- I mean, they are family. Well, that's the way I feel with hearing about it. Really like family, you know they're we're proud of you. We're, you know, we're excited for you. You know, we'll, we'll be there at the grand opening. We'll be there, you know, every step of the way. You know? So it's like, you know, brings uh, almost tears to your eyes. Cause these are people that you know, you didn't know before, before you did barbecue. You know? That's really exciting. And you're also going to be closer to, to somebody that's kind of important in barbecue as well. You'll be uh, close to Mr. Vaughn. He'll be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's become from, from what I understand, he's become quite the fan of us. So, uh, you know, he can get his fix a little bit. Yeah, more often. he'll be a little closer. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Well, like like I like I said, I've been in Los Angeles, and our group of friends and barbecue people are super excited for you and we're super proud. And and we haven't even personally met; we've just met via internet and this. But yeah, it's- yeah. And you know, this time that I have off, I'm gonna have a lot of like, I'm gonna be working on the project a lot, but I'm, I'm gonna try, and I'm not making any promises. I'm gonna try to make it, maybe make it out to California. That'd be great. Maybe make it out to the to the East Coast, uh, you know, the Carolinas and stuff. But I mean, if if I can fit it all in, because yeah. I want to get a little bit of experience. Like, there's places that I want to check out, like how they're dealing with the volume mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And just out in California, just really cool barbecue. The only thing is, is 
uh, y'all are pretty far apart from each other. Like most of the pop-ups and stuff are pretty far apart from each yeah. other. Yeah, but I'm trying yeah. to like I'm uh, a, I don't know if you know Abe Delgado, but the two of us are trying yeah. to put together a list for every weekend so people can kind of uh, plan ahead because they're starting to be get, get more and more prevalent and they're not as far apart. So certain ones oh. are like orange. Some certain ones are like an hour and a half apart, but otherwise. Oh, okay, okay. That's there are good. there are some that you could actually get within 20 minutes of each other. So it's it's starting to change. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, so like I said, I, I want to make it out there, and even if I don't make it out here, there between this, the, you know, uh, this downtime, uh, my wife, she's she's definitely said we need to go out there, we need to go check it out, and you know, uh, yeah. she doesn't want to go to California really, but you got to uh, go to Holland Rays too if you come out here. Okay, well we'll check all that. Out. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll be hitting y'all up for all the kinds of recommendations. No, but no, you got and you, it's fun. You got you should travel a little bit because you're going to be kind of busy. Yeah, it's gonna be a long. Like that's why we just got back from New Orleans. Uh, oh, I saw that. Me and my wife, we had we had a like three or four days off uh, together, and so so let's go do something. Let's not waste this time because it's gonna be the last time for a while that I'm gonna be able to really take a vacation. So, well, that's, uh, but yeah, we we had a really good time. Uh, New Orleans is a really cool spot. That's awesome. I've never been in it. But that's it. Looked like you had a great time. It looked like you ate some good, really good food too, which is. Yeah, we. I mean, for the most of it, probably about ninety eight percent of the food was amazing. We were and see some alligators and all kinds of fun stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's so. cool! You got to see alligators. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well, congratulations again, and uh, I'm really, really excited for you. And uh, thanks for taking the time just to put this little to kind of end note for this interview, so that way people understood what you're doing on what's like what's going yeah. on. Yeah, and so uh, well, I appreciate it, Kevin. I really do. Um, and also, I just want to put out that the like so it is the trailhead uh, at Clear Fork. Okay. Um, is our D-Spot, because everybody's, everybody's been asking me, um, and it is off of the Chisholm Trail Parkway there in Fort Worth. Okay. It's right off, and, and, and the development, Clear Fork itself is a pretty large development. It's a shopping development, so right off the highway. Oh, that's really cool, like a new yeah. shopping development? Yeah, it's a new shopping development, and we're actually in the back side of it, which is right right on the river. Okay. Um, it, it, that's, that's the trailhead, more of a casual side of it. It's kind of like high end in the front and casual in the back. You know? <laughs> that's cool. So, <laughs> now, what, so if, uh, if say you flew in to the airport, how long would it take you to get there? Uh, I would say probably maybe a 20 or 30 minute drive. Okay. Not, it's not super far. No, okay. not at all. I mean, it's, I mean, depending on traffic, of course, but yeah, it, it's, it's fairly quick. Yeah. Cause people that watch this might be flying in for business to Dallas and would want to just Shoot out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of one of our things that we're shooting for is like you know be a place where businessmen and, and women can come and you know roll their sleeves up and have a drink uh, you know while they're have some downtime you know so um, and you know and also just the general uh, public because we want, that's why we want that feel of casual you yeah, don't want yeah. it to feel like stuffy or anything yeah like yeah that, so. that sounds well it's, I, and I can't imagine you having a stuffy place anyways it, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sure. sense for me well like so we'll, ha we'll have a great week and enjoy your time in between the between here and April and uh, we'll keep following you that's really cool All right, thanks Kevin I so, appreciate it hey have a great day